So let's just start this video off by telling you that I made a mistake. I did this wrong. Uh, I, I'm gonna play the video, let's do everything that I filmed already, and then I'll interject back here from the shed in a little bit and tell you where I messed up, but you may figure it out <laughs> way sooner than I get back to you. So uh, just start with your regular scheduled program. Okay, so here's the scoop. If you don't know who Spin Martin is, Spin Martin used to work for the Indianapolis Colts as a groundskeeper, and now he's at the University of Tulsa and does some truly amazing things with the grass over there. He's also got some Tahoma 31 just like this. Keeps it looking pristine. Anyway, Spin is a pro, and he started a Discord chat called Pro Turf Talks. I'll put the link down below if you're interested in going over to that Discord. Spin is in there lots of other professional turf folks who are just there to help you and I out. They're there to answer questions for us. I'm just a dumb idiot. I don't know how to do any of this stuff and so Spin's been super helpful to me because I ask him all these questions, he probably gets annoyed with me. So thank you Spin for helping me out so much. But Spin has kind of walked me through the process of pre-germinating seed. I have never done Kentucky bluegrass seed before, but today I've got Baron Brug Turf Blue Pro by the way, thanks Baron Brug for sending that out to me. Baron Brug has always been too good to me. You guys are awesome. And I'm gonna put that out in my backyard. So normally what I've done in the past is I've done a little tee box and fairway and my green area, all with perennial ryegrass. But this year what I'm doing is I'm putting out the Turf Blue Pro on that same tee box and fairway area, basically in my backyard here, because we're gonna experiment with this and see what happens if we let that in the spring turn into some blue muta. You know, like real old dad's got going in his backyard but I am pre-germinating the Turf Blue Pro, and there are lots of different reasons why that's helpful. So these people like spin, these people that do you know, professional football fields, this sort of thing, they like to keep ryegrass seed pre-germinated. Spin tells me he keeps it pre-germinated like all the time. He's got some in the shop where they can just like always pull some out, throw it down, and have it germinate in a day or two, because perennial ryegrass goes a whole lot faster than um, Kentucky bluegrass or Bermuda grass. So in the wintertime, they can pull that out and throw it down in a bare spot and um, germinate and have a green playing surface all winter long. But for something like Bermuda grass or Kentucky bluegrass, I'll tell you how I understand at least that this is supposed to work. Remember, I'm just a dumb idiot. But Spin tells me that if I put this stuff in these paint strainers, so you get these paint strainers from Lowe's, they're super cheap, it was like five bucks for a two pack or something like that. You put the paint strainers in the buckets, you drill holes in the bottom of the buckets. And you put those buckets in some other buckets. You put your seed in there, and then you fill that those buckets up with water. Now the reason that you put it in the paint strainers and put it in the, in the buckets with holes is so that it's easy to transfer. So you can pull the buckets out, let them drain, and switch out the water every 24 hours. Spin tells me I should put fresh water in there every day. So you basically pull this out. I said, what happens if you don't use the bucket with holes, if you just put water in there? He said, if you pull the paint strainer out, that seed tends to expand and it's hard to get back in the bucket. And so that's the reason for the bucket with the holes in it. Spin tells me if you're doing this with something like perennial ryegrass, it's gonna germinate in like four days in that bucket. It starts getting these little white puffs on it. And if that happens, you need to throw that seed out ASAP because it's gonna start germinating, growing all into that, <laughs> that netting that you've got with the paint strainer and be really hard to get out and be really hard to spread anywhere if it starts to actually sprout. So you get it out as soon as possible, then you just water it for like a day and it'll be sprouting and germinating and rooting right into the ground. But Bermuda grass or Kentucky bluegrass take longer. So the theory is here that I'll put this Kentucky bluegrass in these buckets and I'll switch it out probably for like six days or so, like close to a week, and then I'll put it out. So I mix it with, uh, Milorganite is what Spin tells me is the most ideal I can't find Milorganite. If I can find some when I'm ready for this, then I'll use Milorganite, but um, I use the ProCare Natural, which is pretty similar. But if you mix it with that, then it's easier to put in a spreader and actually be able to spread it, because um, it can like stick to the little fertilizer pellets and uh, you can actually spread it out on the ground. Then after that, after you spread it, so with again, Bermuda grass or Kentucky bluegrass, you still have to water it for a while. So you have to water it for close to a week before you'll see germination, instead of closer to two weeks if you didn't do this in the first place. If you didn't pre-germinate, I've done Bermuda grass. Again, I've never done Kentucky bluegrass before, but Bermuda grass takes like two full weeks to germinate if you just put it out on the ground and water it with a sprinkler. Now, another benefit of pre-germinating is that all of that seed in the buckets stays completely wet for that first six days. So if it's staying completely wet, it's gonna have a much better success rate. And Ben says that that's true. When you put it out on the ground, it seems to have a much better germination rate if you pre-germinate the seed instead of just throwing it out and using a sprinkler. It's also supposed to save water because if you think about it, if you're putting a sprinkler out and doing that for two weeks, you're probably gonna use more water than what it takes to just fill those two five gallon buckets, you know, what, six times, once a day, instead of putting a sprinkler out and turning it on three or four times a day to keep the seed really wet. So maybe save some water in the process. 
I think it's just more convenient because I don't have to think about it throughout the day. I can just leave it in those buckets, forget. I only have to do something once, change out the water, at least for the first six days. And then instead of having to move a sprinkler for two full weeks, I just have to do it for closer to one week. So maybe a little bit easier, more convenient possibly. So I don't know, we're gonna see how this goes. This is an experiment for me, an experiment with Kentucky bluegrass or blue muta. Also experiment with pre-germinating seeds. So you get to follow along and see how this goes. So uh, let's have some fun with it. So I'm interjecting here from the shed again. Did you see what I screwed up? So I probably shouldn't even associate Spin with this video. He's probably ashamed, like <laughs> covering his face in embarrassment that I'm even saying that he's the one that told me how to do this. But it was my fault. I'm the one that misunderstood. So for pre-germinating seed, um, <laughs> you can put it in these, but now that worked great with the, you know, the paint strainer and the buckets and the holes and everything. What I did wrong uh, was that you're supposed to fill it with water every day and then drain it. <laughs> so you get it really wet and then drain it. So the seed stays wet, but it's not submerged in water. But anyway, let's get to the results. I think it turned out pretty well. So uh, here you go. You can see where we're at. We're at October 31st. So it's been, uh, what, a couple months since I initially started this whole process. Um, but here we are. Here are the results as of October 31st. The Bermuda's not completely dormant, uh, but I think it's looking pretty good. And I put down some sweet stripes. I like to have fun with it, you know, put in something kind of unique. And that's where we're sitting right now, so we'll, uh, you know, see how it looks in the middle of the winter when all the Vermeer grass is dormant. I'm not expecting it to be, to be completely full. Um, but anyway, I think it looks good for now, and, uh, you know, I think that kind of does it for this video. So thanks for bearing with me, and at least now you know maybe not what not to do <laughs> when you're doing some pre-germination with seed. And that's going to go for ryegrass or something like this Turf Blue Pro from Baron Brug. Thanks again to Baron Brug for that seed. Baron Brug's been an awesome partner of mine. You gotta check out, they have some great seeds for all kinds of different grasses. Um, I've loved every product that I've had from them. So anyway, check out Baron Brug if you're in the market for seed, and I will see you guys later.